The police ban Shiite from holding a procession, but Muslims can? Aren't Shiite Muslims? Well, the governor of Kano State, Abdullahi um, Umar Ganduje, was once embroiled in a million dollar bribery case, but hey, he's governor of the year now. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cohn. Shiite Muslims in Nigeria on Tuesday proce uh, proceeded with their annual religious procession, ignoring warnings by security agents uh, against the procession across the country. Now, the group Islamic Movement in Nigeria said its members were killed in attempts by the police to stop the procession across Nigeria. And I'm being joined in the studio by Tunji Abdulhamid. He's a lawyer and a political analyst. It's good to have you join us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And also, uh, I have Ada Njemanze. She is a public relations expert. It's good to have you join us, Thank Ada. You. So I'm, I'm going to start with Tunji because you're a lawyer. Um, the police's statement is the first thing that hit me because um, I read it in the news and I was wondering, Muslims can protest, but Shiites cannot. And I'm wondering, who are the Shiites? Maybe you could help me. Uh, probably, that would not be a legal issue. It's, it's <laughs> I'm not just a legal saying. question, yeah. Uh, probably a Shiite is also a Muslim, a, 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 a member of a particular group in a Muslim. You know, Muslim, we have a Shiite Muslim, we have the... Sunni, Muslim, or whatever they are, so they are a lot of category of a uh, Muslim, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, side Sunni or whatever, they are all uh, Muslim. But probably the police are saying the side cannot uh, protest because uh, it wasn't a, pro it, it, uh, a procession. It was a procession. They can't carry out procession, probably because of the recent. Uh, pronouncement of the court. Which, but, uh, but you see, what the police's statement was before now, and the ban by the president was against. I Every mean, for, yes, I am in I'm itself, to... and they, there was also a ban against protests, so they cannot protest. But this is a procession that is allowed in their faith, which covers whether you're Shiite, whether you're Sunni, whatever name that you come on, under, you are a Muslim. So if a statement says Muslims are allowed to protest, but um, Shiites are not allowed to, so that, that's what I'm going to, does that I, I, not make the Shiites wonder? Well, are we a Muslim or are we, I, am I no that? longer a Muslim? Yeah, that, that, is, that is the question. And I, like I said, they are Muslim, as far as I'm concerned. But they, you know, the issue is that there is a confusion here. And the confusion has to do with the fact that, uh, you know, recently the court pro proscribed uh, IMN. Uh, IMN is, is an organization. Anybody can belong to a uh, uh, Muslim, whether Muslim or whatever you can be. So uh, you, if, you want to pro if they are protesting now, and they are not saying they are protesting as a Muslim, Definitely, you are sorry. Uh, uh, they are doing procession as a Muslim, not as either as a member of IMN or side. Even side, 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 side was not prescribed. What was prescribed was a I IMN. So I can, we can, they can, they can say we are doing our procession not as IMN, but as uh, uh, you know. But the issue again is that the other says in whatever name. But that 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 make it difficult for for everybody to understand because the other to me, as far as I'm concerned. Is summer. It okay. is summer. But, but, but having regard to that, uh, I think whether Syed, whether Sunni or whatever, they have the right to carry out their, their procession as a Muslim. Because if you say a Muslim can, can, can do their, their own uh, procession, but Syed can't do. Is Syed not a Muslim? They are a Muslim. I, I will come back to the nitty gritties of the law concerning this prescription, but let me come to you at that. As a PR person, Messages, messaging is very important, especially when you're dealing with the public and sensitive issues such as this. Um, a lot of people would say that the police is just doing whatever it takes to make themselves look good. And some other people are saying, well, they're trying to keep the peace. But these people had put out a statement saying they were going to process or proceed because this is in accordance to their religion. And then you put out a statement saying only Muslims can do this procession. It leaves the people confused. Why can't we have clear messaging in this country? I mean, it's, a, it's been a problem even before we were born. We've never been precise or concrete when, we, when we're releasing statements. So that's always a problem for uh, people to understand whatever message is being passed and everybody takes the message and you take it and you take it to your own meaning, I take it to my own meaning, he takes it to his own meaning. But that becomes a problem in terms of 
everybody understanding that part that what's the mission or the vision behind that statement mm -hmm. now you're saying these people cannot proceed for their religious this is an annual religious festival and uh, religious uh, ritual all over the world mm -hmm. if the court has this order what are you saying exactly that there's already a tensed environment your communication your the, your style of communication should make it less uh less um easy it should make it easier for people to understand and say okay do you know what let's come to this let's come to a middle ground mm -hmm. because even in public relations the idea is you come to a middle ground that benefits both parties mm -hmm. for them but in this case one party does not need to benefit in any way because they have somewhat been shut down like three people from different states so what happened in abuja abuja was peaceful the issue was from the other northern states. Well, the guys in Abuja, from the reports that we got, quickly finished their procession because they did not want to have an interface with the police. But again, this is my question. Uh, when I looked at uh, the news, my question was, if they're all going to uh, come out for the procession, what, well, how do you distinguish between... A site Muslim. Like yes, a, because that's, a, my, a, that's my confusion. And, and Muslim because you're saying site. it's only... Uh, uh, Muslims that are, but these are also Muslims. So how do you distinguish? So the problem is also from the system. Communicate in clear terms. Already the court order says anybody affiliated or associated or whatever with these people who are seen as ter uh, are seen as terrorists, but it's the same religion. Yeah. So there's a problem there in terms of the messaging. The like clarity your, of that message. It's, it, there's a problem. It's a very big problem, and it's something that, I mean, like their 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 lawyer can contest in court, and it's also the same thing that the UN is also trying to also push forward. So there's a problem with the messaging. If you're saying this, then prove this. Interesting. Back to you, Tunji. <laughs> if this law is somewhat clear and has said the IMN, like you said. But the IMN doesn't mean, it doesn't cover the whole, all of the Muslims or whoever the Shiites are. So can you really say that Shiites are not necessarily all members of the IMN? Or are you saying that they're all one and the same? Because you said the law said IMN. It does not mean that it covers whoever is a Shiite or it didn't say expressly. It's like the issue of IPOB and... Um, no, no, no. So there's IPUB and then there's the Biafra thing. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, the two, but That's you right. know, some people will say they're one and the same. Mm -hmm. And it's very confusing, really. So if the police is in between this or they have been caught in the middle of all of this, people are they're going to shoot at sight or kill people that they're not supposed to, who might not necessarily be IMN members. Yeah, you are, you are right. Because... Uh, like I said later on, even, the, even the, there was a clarification regarding that order that what was prescribed was IMN and not, they, not, they, are, they, they were not prevented from practicing their religion. Mm -hmm. they are only been, the, the organization as a, as, a, as, as a body is what has been uh, prescribed. prescribed. So in other words, they can also, in other way, in, a, in, a, in other, uh, way do their own uh, Muslim, uh, practice their own religion without uh, the name uh, IMN. They, this is, there is a confusion here. There's a confusion I won't lie to you. Isn't this, a, the isn't, is this, is isn't this a trampling on their fundamental human rights? Which one is freedom of association, free, the freedom to courts. practice or be part of... Yes, you know, so is this not an infringement the, of their fundamental human rights? The matter rights? is still in court and that's part of the argument they are talking about in court. So we cannot uh, that, 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 uh, yes. uh, look into that uh, aspect yes. of the, so that won't be infringing on the principle of a list pendants or whatever. Yes. You know, the, the, the issue is this. The, when you prescribe an organization, how do you determine who and who are members of that, of, of that uh, organization? Mm -hmm. How do you know I'm carrying out my protest or my procession or whatever in the name of that uh, organization? That is the difficulty in this, in this situation. If they decide not to carry any pl uh, placard or anything regarding IMN and they are just working on their own as a Muslim, they, they, they have the right to do that in that regard because they are not doing so as a member of IMN. They are doing it as a Muslim. Muslim. And as a Muslim, you are, they, they've said you have the right to 
practice your religion. We are not we are, we are not prevented from being the other not prevent you from coming out your religion as a Muslim. So if as a Muslim we say okay, on the early basis we do this, and as a Muslim we are doing this now, not as I M N. That would be a, a justification for them. So the other is ambiguous in a way, and the, the difficulty there's a difficulty in determining how the other will be will be will be will be, will be enforced in, against any person because just like she said, the, how do you not will you not Innocent people will they not be exactly. caught in the world. In the in crossfire. The web. You know, because you won't know whether there's not it's not written on anybody's face that Which I'm is a what member of about the messaging. IMN. Mm. They are not it's not written on anybody's face that I'm a site member or I'm protest I'm doing my procession as a site or as an IMN member. So this is a difficulty that, that I see in that uh, situation. I, I think in as much as they are not uh, they, if 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 they want to carry out that procession and they will not be using the banner IM, IMN, I think they should be allowed to they should they should they ought to have been allowed to carry out their possession without any uh, disturbance. Let's talk about the handling by the police because recently there's been too many shootings. Let's not forget, during the last protest, a police officer died, an NYSC um, member died. There's been a lot of killing. As much as we're talking about PR now, the police is our friend. <laughs> but the police is also in, the, in a bid to do their jobs, killing people. Is that supposed to be the light in which we see the police? Whether it's, an, it's a shared issue, whether it's a normal Occupy Nigeria or um, what's it called now? Um, the Shawari movement, okay. you know, okay. asking okay. for good governance. Or NSAS. Or NSAS. We see the police no, always bring, very bring back our trigger yeah. happy. And we're, and, and we're here trying to also deal with the imaging of the Nigeria police force in a bid to carry out their duties. How are they supposed to do that without making sure, without, you know, allowing people to die in the line of duty? So, I mean, I mean it's, it's so painful that Nigeria, we've gotten to this stage because they say police is your friend. Mm. Is police really your friend? If you ever have a situation that lands you at the police station, it's one of the worst things you will ever want to. You wouldn't want to wish your enemy on that. But the thing is this, you get to the, head, you get to the headquarters of the police force, and then you see the leadership is saying one thing, and then you get to the regional uh, stations, and it's something different. So it's a problem in, we don't have, we have a major problem, first of all, with, when it comes to accountability. If we start holding people accountable for certain actions, then people would learn. These officers will learn, they will pay for. But you see, the thing is, right now, it's easier now for you to start holding people accountable, but for how long? We hold them accountable on social media. Beyond social media, nothing happens. You know, people try to follow up the cases, and before you know what's happening, the cases disappear in front of our very own eyes. But the problem is, you, you sit down here with maybe the police commissioner, and he says one thing, and you go out into the road, and then you hear something different from the officers. So who is passing the message? There's a line. In communication, there's a line. So, so the message is getting to a particular point, and it's not coming down, down again. And then you look at it from another side. Some of these officers are frustrated. No, it's the truth. Some of them are frustrated. They might not come out. To, when you engage some of them in conversations, they're frustrated. They're frustrated with the way things are, the way the but system is. But it's the average Nigerian because of the police's frustration. Yeah, but you see, that's the thing. You, say it as, you see it as a, like I said, there's a line. So whatever communication, whatever instruction that has been given, sometimes doesn't get to the bottom. Who do you deal with when you step out? But, but, the, but there is there is a basic training for policing all over the world. Even some of our finest police officers have even been to Scotland Yard and they've been trained. In, in other climbs, there are rubber bullets, there's the water cannons, there are different things, you know, shields when you, for riot police, I mean, if it gets that bad. But in Nigeria, it doesn't even have to get to a riot situation. You know, a bullet is fired. A bullet is fired, yeah. More like we have no value for human lives in this country. And here we are trying to ask, and this is not in any way to rubbish the lives of the people who have been killed in South Africa, but we're asking that there be justice. But where is the justice for the people who are here yeah. in Nigeria? That is, that is a problem. We don't follow our lives in this country. That is why you see a small argument with somebody who has been paid with your 
uh, 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 taxpayers' uh, money. Mm. Uh, having an argument with you, Joseph, for over two, three thousand dollars or, or minor ag argument, is, is shot at you. You know, they, they, they see, and do you know why that's happening? No, people are not being punished when this happens. When this happens, you just hear guru, 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 after a while, you hear nothing about it again, and that's, that's the end. So if there have been punishment for people who have committed such an offense or whatever, and they, they've seen that, that, look, it was actually dealt with, with to, the, to, to the conclusion, people will be restrained from doing that. And again, sometimes the police, whenever they act in support of what the government likes, they believe they are protected. Mm. And therefore, they are ready to do anything they want. They, 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 they want they. But is that how policing is supposed to be? Because no. the truth is, I was having a conversation with a preacher yesterday, and he said that the solution to Nigeria's problem is the independence of the police, is for the police's reform and a thorough reforming. If the policeman is well fed, is well taken care of, he's well trained, and he sees no politician, no rich or poor, then we probably that would be the beginning of good things to have to come in Nigeria. Is that really which which institution is, is independent in this country? Is our judicial <laughs> independent? Is our national assembly that is supposed to be the watchdog of the executive is it independent? Is our local government is, are they independent? There is no independent uh, agency in this country. That's that's the problem. It's any agency that work on that, even the FCC, the ICPC, they are not independent. They may be independent on paper or whatever, but in actual practice or what they do. They are not independent because they wait for directions from somewhere before they take action. So except, except you know, well, and like I said earlier on, whenever they are doing any duty that has to do with uh, protecting or the, that has to do with the interest of the of the government, they they, they feel happy and they should they, that they, be they, their they, priority? Isn't yeah. us no, the people? No, they because, we because be that's why they were the no, But the the oaths that they take, in fact, the 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 the, the word or the the line for the police is to protect and serve and protect who are they protecting us who are they serving us we should be the priority shouldn't it be that i mean you mentioned something about the independent body and, uh, and that is where the frustration i mentioned is coming from you know there's just so many things so many things that you can't afford to say oh the, the police reform what's the guarantee that if they become independent what's the guarantee that is going to be become better but there will be some form of accountability and they will be accountable to us, not necessarily a government arm. The general problem Nigeria has, even beyond the police, is accountability. When we start holding people accountable for every single thing, that's, for every action, then we would now say we are ready to move forward. If you, the police, like he said, they're taking instructions from somebody. It's one thing to come on TV and say, ah, this is the police constitution. On our constitution, on our rule book, this, in our rule book, this is what we follow. And then it's one thing to leave here, go to the office of your superior, and take a different instruction. So it's a problem. It's a ladder. Nigeria is it's difficult for a lot of these organizations, all these bodies to function as independent. They always still take instructions. Back to the IMN issue, uh, yes, we know it's in courts, we can't really discuss it, but going forward, where does the fundamental human rights of the average Nigerian on any level, whether it's be as a group or you as a person, as a lawyer, me as a journalist, where does our right stop and where does the duty of a law enforcement agent your begin? Right, your right starts as, as defined by the Constitution. Every citizen of the country has the right uh, to more freely in the country, you have the right to live, you have the right to personal liberty and all as such. But the issue is that in this country, we take laws into our hand a lot, particularly the, federal, the, the government. I was about to ask, when was the last time we did anything that the Constitution When, when the says? government, who is to be, to be a role model in terms of obeying the order, will be the one to disobey order, what do you expect of the citizen? When you don't lay the, like I said, I was given. I was arguing on a on a particular session this morning on radio, and I said, "Look, somebody was at the studio, and he said, uh, the it would be illegal for the side to do their possession because there's another of court, and therefore, if they are doing so, they are doing it. Uh, they are doing an illegal act." I agree with him to an extent that, uh, in view of the order of the court, I am in a, I, I am in, cannot do any possession. You cannot do any possession in, the, in that name. But in as much as if I want to go by the interpretation of the of the order of court of the of the obeying order of court 
as regards federal government and the Attorney General of the Federation. Because remember when the Dasuki and Co were, uh, the, even the the, the, exactly. the Esazaki, they were granted a, a bail from the court. They said they were not released because they are a threat to national security. Mm -hmm. And because, again, the matter is on appeal. So because it's on appeal, they can't release them. So I mean, I can also say we have appealed the order of the court. I haven't appealed the order of the court. I we have the right to, to continue doing our businesses until that order is, until the appeal is, is, is determined. That's not, that's not normal. It, the normal thing is that once another is made, whether rightly or wrongly, you are bound to obey it. Whether the court is right, whether the court is not right, whether it's, not in, whether it's against the interest of, against national interest or it's not against national interest, you are bound to obey it. You, because in asking whether, because if it's not proper for you to go to court, argue your case, and after the court has make, made a decision one, one way or the other, you now come back again and say, no, these are, we are of opinion. So in other words, you are sitting as an appeal in your own case. And that's what has happened in the case of uh, uh, our, 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 our Sasaki and the, uh, what's it called? Uh, former uh, security uh, advisor, uh, Dasuki. So and that, that's, that scenario and that precedent is not good for our system. But you see, there are pundits who say that the legal system in Nigeria is skewed and our lawyers are part of the problem. The judiciary is part of the problems that we have. And the executives and politicians have taken advantage of those loopholes and the twisting of the laws and bending of... And so we can't really, the judiciary can't sit down in one corner and point to the executive because the executive is also saying, well, you gave us room to do this. So if today the lawyers are saying the executive, the president, governors are flouting the constitution or picking and choosing what laws to obey, that is started with you guys. Uh, yeah, I, to an extent, I agree with you that the judiciary is also part of the problem of the country. Why? Well, they are also part of the problem of the country because those who are at the helm of affairs in Nigeria, they are also, they are also Nigerians. Nigerian, system, Nigerian uh, malaria or FIFA or whatever is also part of them. They have been affected by it. So the, the, the truth is that, look, and that's why I say who is independent in this country, which agency is independent in this country. You know, more, like our, recently we completed our, our MBA uh, conference and the issue was being discussed. Somebody raised an issue regarding uh, trying to advise the judges not to be timid. And a particular judge from a particular state, I won't mention the name, rose up and said, uh, is it CJ, that's the chief judge of a state, said, we are not timid. Do you expect us to be fighting those, who's, who's, those, those, those that are feeding us? You can't imagine that statement. That wow. is the mindset that, in other words, we cannot do otherwise if anything is against the government. We must go the way the government is looking into or whatever the executive is looking for, we must give them. So because where is, where we, we is are not the expected democracy and, where is, and so, where is the division of, uh, where is the... the no, div because some of them did not see themselves, some of them see themselves as, I must protect my job. I must eat. I, can, I cannot do otherwise, otherwise I'll be, I'll be, I'll be sent out. Protect when when, when a CGN mean. of a country can be booted out of office with, by way of expert or application, what, what, what more can the just ordinary judge do? So everybody is afraid because if, and what happened? Nothing happened. It, it's gone, it's gone. And in closing, because we have to go at that quickly, for those of us who are supposed to be in charge of messaging and putting out press releases or sending out, you know, information, what should be the clear cut rule in doing that? Um, straight to the point. Your message needs to be clear. If your message is not clear, we don't get your message. The message needs to be clear to whoever you're who the responder is. If your responder doesn't understand your message, you haven't communicated. You're not again. communicated. It's 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 literally just passes. Because when your responder is able to understand and process your message, then if the responder defaults or does it fails to not obey whatever situation that is, then that's where there is a case. But when the responder can take that message and say, well, this message, I can actually break it down into three different messages. What were you saying exactly? It's a problem. So already, Nigeria, we have a problem in terms of our messaging. It's not, it's beyond, it's not it's just the government thing, the bodies, companies, we're not specific. Mm -hmm. And then we see other countries, other countries are very specific, so detailed that you're even like, wow, this really just hit the, hit the nail, mm. you know? But we need to get that. We, we, it feels like sometimes we're just beating around the bush when all we can just say is three sentences and you tell me what I need to know or tell me what I cannot do or what, and it's fine. But it seems that 
the messages we see in the media than the ones we see on the social media. Social media seems to be more straight to the point than the media. All right, Adat Njimanze is a public relations expert. Tunji Abdul Amid is a lawyer and a political analyst. Thank you, gentlemen and lady, Thank you for you. being here. We'll take a short break now. When we return, we'll be talking about Ganduje and the dollar controversy and his recent award. It's going to be interesting. Stay with us.